Good afternoon. My name is Michele Sansoni, and I'm project advisor um, uh, at EASME, and I'm working in the energy unit. And I have the pleasure to moderate uh, the session of the uh, financing home renovation um, with an Innovate project. Uh, just want you to um, remind that uh, um, EASME is managing the energy efficiency part of the Horizon 2020 Energy Challenge. And in case you have any questions on the programs, uh, there is a EASME stand in the exhibition area and there are colleagues that can you uh, can explain you um, in detail so i also have the pleasure to be the project advisor of the innovate project and innovate project is an ambitious project which will develop and roll out attractive energy retrofit packages in 11 countries and in particular they want to target private residential buildings, so single-family houses and condominiums. I have the pleasure also to work with Jana, who is the coordinator of Innovate Project. And Jana is head of projects and campaigns in energy cities, more than 12 years of experience. And she's coordinating European projects and activities, uh, in particular focused on sustainable energy projects in urban areas. Jana, you will have 30 minutes, and after that, we will have 15 minutes for questions and answers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michele, and thank you for inviting uh, me and uh, the project Innovate as well to, to this forum. So let me first introduce you the project partners. Uh, Energy Cities is the European Association of Cities in Energy Transition. It's the coordinator of the project. We have the technical and financial expertise of uh, Vesta Conseil and Finance. Uh, which is a consultancy based in Paris, in France, and who has been accompanying the creation of energy, local energy renovation platforms in France, and also animating and coordinating the national platform of cities and regions who are uh, developing uh, projects uh, and operators, uh, accelerate, yeah, uh, um, supporting the um, renovation, energy renovation of the housing sector. Then we have. Um, a set of experienced and learning partners. Experienced partners are those who already have uh, some experience uh, with uh, energy renovation of housing and has, have already put in place uh, some services related to this, including financing um, schemes. Among them are, for example, Brussels Environment, uh, which is an administration of the Brussels capital region here in Belgium. Uh, Parity projects in the UK, which is actually standing behind the cooperative of uh, SMEs, construction and building companies in the London area. They have been cooperating with uh, six London boroughs. Uh, Riga Energy Agency in Latvia. Uh, KAW, which is a, a private uh, company, uh, startup uh, that has been cooperating with uh, six uh, Dutch, uh, Dutch cities. Uh, and Frederikshaven Municipality in Denmark. Most of these partners have already been involved in the, another European project called Infinite Solutions. And the objective of this project was, was to develop uh, soft loan financing schemes for homeowners who want to en energy renovate their houses. So they have lots of experience with financing as well. And then we have learning partners who basically are starting from scratch, kind of, like Herland Municipality in the Netherlands, Linais University, which has been cooperating with the municipality of Vakio and the Kronenbordic region in Sweden. The small municipality of Litomierzice in the Czech Republic, Mantova municipality in Italy, Achenex, which is the regional energy agency of Extremadura region in Spain, and Aradipo municipality in Cyprus. So uh, through our project, we would like to accelerate deep energy retrofits in single family houses and condominiums. And our solution, which we think would work, is uh, to set up an attractive energy efficiency service package, which is ideally offered uh, in a one-stop shop. Um, why we think that the one-stop shop is a good solution? Well, we see that the renovation rates of the existing housing are 
very low for and, and, and also experience shows that uh, maybe it's because there is no one single easy, attractive and credible solutions for homeowners. So kind of a one-stop shop where they could, they could come and where they would receive the technical and financial support from the beginning of their project until the very end. Um, such a one-stop shop or such an energy efficiency service package includes uh, communication and marketing. So um, this is raising awareness about benefits of energy renovation because we still see that the homeowners, they are not aware or they just don't care. Then the role of uh, or the mission of such a one stop shop then the role of uh, or the mission of such a one stop shop would be to develop tailor made products as well uh, because as we already heard in another session today um, the citizens and homeowners energy efficiency is not their first uh, priority they want to first renovate their house for different reasons, because they want to enlarge it, because uh, the family is growing, or because the person is getting old and they, or is handicapped and they need to somehow adapt the, the house to these conditions. Or maybe they just simply dream about new kitchen. So the idea is not to sell energy efficiency renovation, but to sell a renovation that the pe people really dream about in the situation, family situation, or situation in their life where they are. Um, then uh, the next service that would be offered in such a one-stop shop is uh, energy renovation and financial plan. So the energy renovation plan is needed to have really ambitious objectives and really aim at uh, deep energy retrofits, but which can be done as well in, in uh, individual steps. And this energy renovation plan should be done uh, ideally by an independent body, which is not recommending this uh, company or, or another and which is really making sure that the solutions that are uh, brought to the, to the house are global and that these savings can be achieved. Um, so part of the solution is also a financial plan, which is individual. Um, many households, for example, can, have, uh, um, can be eligible for different national or regional subsidies, but maybe the schemes are very complicated. There are many subsidies that are available, or maybe there are different loans that are offered by different inst financing institutions. So just to make their idea clear, it's uh, good to prepare a financial plan which is adapted to each household and which takes into account all these issues and also the, um, the financial situation of the, of the household. Um, then part of the package would also be the coordination of the process. So the coordination of the uh, uh, making sure that the solutions are implemented in an in integrated and global man manner and that the energy savings that have been calculated in the beginning are really achieved and that, uh, and, and that they are also guaranteed. There is a guarantee of results. And at the end, uh, part of this package would also be uh, long-term and affordable uh, financing. And um, we also actually realized in uh, the previous project that we coordinated, Infinite Solutions, that we thought that financing is really the main problem of energy renovation. And just because it's very expensive, people don't do that. But many cities who have partners in this project realized that very, very often that was not at all the main problem. And that uh, really it was the awareness of the benefits and completely other barriers that were there. And that's why the idea of this uh, one-stop shop that would provide, that would respond to the questions of the homeowners in one, in one single place and that would treat all the barriers uh, together. Uh, now, who should develop such uh, one-stop shops and uh, offer such integrated energy efficiency service package? Uh, the experience shows as well that local and regional authorities play really a crucial role in this process because such one-stop shops do not spontaneously appear. Uh, the private sector doesn't organize itself in a manner that would offer such a complete, complex solution to, the, to homeowners. So uh, local authorities take more and more uh, initiatives because they are committed to energy and climate goals, because uh, they are a credible partner for homeowners, because they know the buildings and people on their territory. So for all these reasons, they are also the credible uh, uh, coordinator for, for many different actors that are on the market. So they are really the, the key actor in, uh, in the renovation of the housing sector. 
And uh, what we have seen from different experiences in Europe, we could think about these two alternative uh, business models where local authorities are either developers of such one-stop shops or they are coordinators of different actors on their territory who offer these different energy efficient services to homeowners. In the case when they are developers, um, there are experiences in, especially in France and that were presented in other sessions. Uh, like for example, it's the case in the region of Picardy, uh, Past Renovation, or public-private company like Sem Energy Positive in Ile-de-France, or they can uh, pass a contract or have a partnership agreement with a private company or a cooperative that will do this job for them. Um, and when they are coordinators, um, they just bring all these partners together, um, ideally under the same roof, but maybe we can see later that this is not so easy to, to do. Uh, when we developed the project Innovate, we were very much inspired by the French pilot examples that I mentioned before, uh, which have actually uh, developed the one-stop shops that uh, offer all the services under the same roof and are the only uh, interface between the homeowner and the construction companies. Uh, but then uh, we realized that uh, this model maybe is not feasible uh, for everyone or maybe it really depends on each territory, which solutions you, the territory is going for. It depends on many different, uh, many different aspects that have to be taken into account and that maybe also the role of a coordinator could be, could be an interesting, that could also be an interesting model. Then for the developer, local authorities and developers, we see, again, mainly in France, the pilot examples when uh, these one-stop shops offer in also the financing within their offer. Um, we have also seen, and there are partners in Innovate Project, the private company Rymark or the cooperative Retrofit Works, they do not provide financing within, uh, within their package. And then we have the examples when uh, uh, local authorities are coordinators and they manage to mobilize and create partnerships with local banks which provide uh, soft loans, so low interest loans or the loans that have the longer payback uh, period, longer maturity, or have some other advantages uh, for homeowners. And these kind of soft loans for home reno energy renovation are offered in the Brussels capital region, the Brussels Green Loan. In Frederikshavn, the city managed to set up cooperation with uh, eight local banks. Uh, in Parma, Italy, they are cooperating with Cari Parma, uh, the local branch of Credit Agricole Bank. Uh, and for example, the city of Assen in the Netherlands that is testing uh, cost service fee uh, uh, type or business model. Now we have tried to think about the advantages and disadvantages of two different models because the partners in the Innovate project will have to choose between the two. And uh, for both of them you have advantages. I will start with the local authorities as developers. The first advantage that this one-stop shop uh, that the municipality would create is a unique interface with homeowners so they only have one contact person in front of them and one contract and then it's the one-stop shop who will deal with all the uh, uh, construction companies, builders, craftsmen, and so on. Uh, the advantage of such companies is also that uh, they can have a better leverage effect on the actors that are involved and can also generate economies of scale. For example, they have experience already with uh, the costs, for example, of different services or different technologies, and then they can just replicate the model to other projects, or they can, for example, hire uh, the craftsmen for uh, the projects of a bigger scale, which are more interesting for craftsmen and which also generate the economies of scale for the project. Then the advantage of such an operator is as well that they can reach out to very or low or even medium income households, which is not the case when you create a partnership with a bank, which will always have stricter uh, criteria when it will check the credit worthiness of, of homeowners, and maybe they will not give the loans or soft loans to, to everyone. 
So maybe even the persons, for example, that have just uh, limited uh, working contracts or which are not in a stable situation, they may be, may be disadvantaged. Whereas when you have your own public or public-private operator, it's you who is setting the rules, so you can say, we are also going to accept these persons or this type of situation. Um, then also this operator, because they are pooling different renovation projects together, can be also more interesting for financing institutions like uh, uh, Raphael from uh, Sem Energy Positive can maybe tell a little bit better, but uh, the EIB has a pilot program uh, in France when they are uh, financing these public and public-private operators uh, and actually refinancing the loans that they provide to homeowners. So what we learned from bank the banking sector as well is that if the municipalities manage to generate the project pipeline and they manage to pool many different smaller projects together, it becomes much more interesting for banks and for financing institutions to finance such projects or such an operator because they can see that the projects are there, they will be implemented. And this operator can be a guarant, technical guarant of the project. And uh, the advantage, another advantage I think is as well that it's a unique mission of such an operator and it's a clear mission, so they really concentrate only on, on, on this project and they are not uh, disturbed by many other different projects that they may have if uh, it is the, pub, the, the municipality or the region itself who is taking care of the, of the project. The disadvantages are, on the other hand, that it can be very time consuming to create such a legal structure. It also demands a very high political ambition. Uh, and a vision as well, like to have the project that you're going to launch for, for many years. Um, there is these operators that, we, that were a big inspiration for us are still just in an experimental phase, so only few pilots have been tested so far, but anyhow we are interested to see if they are replicable in other EU countries, in other cities. Um, there can be also, uh, when you offer the financing, which is integrated in your, in your package, uh, and you offer loans uh, to, to citizens, to homeowners, you might need to comply with uh, banking regulations, uh, because only banks have right to provide loans uh, to homeowners, and that was also the, one of the issues in France but uh, they managed to uh, change the legislation and when the energy transition law in France was uh, adopted, one of the measures were that the cities uh, or regions were allowed to create such third-party financing operators and offer uh, loans to, to homeowners. Uh, so yeah, you must be ready if you go for this model to face uh, different, different challenges which uh, uh, maybe the, the directly cities and regions can talk more about. Um, if you go for the coordinating model, um, you have the advantage of build on the existing actors because you may realize that many actors and services that you need for this one-stop shop are already on the market. You just need to bring people together, create links and make them sure and bring them under the one, one brand, we could say. Um, the management of such a structure could be also more flexible. It's uh, probably res less risky for local authority because you are not creating any structure, you are just coordinating people. And you can, that was one of the arguments of the Infinite Solutions partners as well, was that the partner banks have unlimited funds, whereas you as a public authority, your funds could be limited, and if you don't find a refinancing, it can be difficult to find a sustainable business model. Um, and this advantage is that it could be very difficult to bring all these actors under one roof and really take the, uh, really have a, like try to have a point of view of the homeowner who is looking for easy solution. So if you have to go to see the craftsman here, energy advice center here, then go to bank here, maybe it becomes a little bit more complicated. Um, it can also be time consuming to coordinate all those partners and try to follow your own vision or your own project. Um, also, the disadvantage is that the local authorities, they cannot really make recommendations regarding craftsmen or building companies. They have to stay completely neutral. So even if you set up certification schemes at local level, for example, to show we are working with these partners and these are the, the, the high quality construction companies, for example, they cannot say which uh, the homeowner should privilege and which not. And it can also be difficult, as we saw, to get banks on board and uh, offer these soft loans to, to homeowners. Um, 
Innovate Partners um, are actually this project has started started in June 2017, so it's quite new. Uh, but our approach is uh, to first of all um, do the market gap analysis on each target territory, so 11 territories that we have, to find out what is the building stock on each city's territory, who are the people who live there, what are the difficulties, the main barriers to energy home renovation, uh, and w which are the missing services and missing actors on the market. Um, then we think about how we are going to fill in the market gap. Is it really necessary to set up a completely new operator or can we just maybe mobilize one new actor or just fill in this gap with one single service that will be offered by the city? Uh, then we will think about how to make this business model operational and sustainable with relevant financing schemes. And at the end, we will try to share and scale up successful business models by capacity building workshops and studies, policy recommendations and events that we will organize at the, at the end of the project. Um, and I would like to give you just a couple of uh, very concrete examples of uh, our, our partners, uh, which are actually not uh, public or local authorities, but that were very inspiring for us. Like for example, Rijmarkt, in the Netherlands, which is a startup, a private company, which was in the past responsible for running energy desks in uh, many Dutch cities. So they just provided energy information about energy renovation, about energy efficiency renewables, and they realized that this is not sufficient to make people act. Uh, so they developed a business model um, and set up um, a one-stop shop where they actually offer all the services except for financing for single-family houses in six Dutch cities. Um, so far they have um, uh, managed to get about 10,000 contacts with homeowners. They invested, um, actually it was 1,750 renovations that have been already done in uh, three years. And uh, yeah, the financing is uh, not much used for the moment and they would like to develop this concept of one-stop shop also for condominiums now in the framework of this project. So really yeah, the idea of, uh, of one place where people can go and discuss with one person that's really something that seems to be attractive for homeowners and they are quite successful. Um, in the very beginning mm -hmm. uh, Raimarkt was actually subsidized by these cities in which uh, they operate they received national and also local subsidies to develop the business model and to test different solutions. Without this public uh, support in the beginning, it wouldn't be possible to, to start. And then another um, interesting solution is uh, when the local authorities work with cooperatives, like Retrofit Works in uh, this London area, which was also sponsorized by Herringy Council in the beginning. And it's of local SMEs, uh, craftsmen and parity projects which is a consultancy company that is supporting this cooperative looking for contracts and looking for partnerships with local authorities. And uh, we think actually that the cooperative could be also a very interesting model. This is a quotation from the founder of the parity project that is behind the cooperative because Actually, people might be more interested in renovation as well when they see that it's the local, little local companies, rather small scale, that are working on these projects and that the money that is spent on energy renovation comes back to the territory. And cooperative can also be uh, very flexible in terms of organization and as a business model. So uh, it's also the risk is maybe shared between different members of the cooperative. So it could be really an interesting model that is not... Uh, public, but public authorities could work with, with cooperatives like that. Um, this is what I already mentioned, the city of Frederikshaven that actually realized uh, already in the first project that people in uh, Frederikshaven are quite rich. They have lots of money on saving accounts. The money is not at all problem for energy renovation, but they just, yeah, they just didn't go for it. Even if the municipality, for example, uh, started uh, like launched a kind of award. They wanted to renovate one single family house completely for free. Like people didn't react. They didn't, like nobody was interested and they were like, what's happening here? <laughs> so then they, for example, uh, prepared this uh, uh, info truck that is now coming to the neighborhoods. 
it parks there for two or three days. People can take the uh, appointment with the energy advisor who prepares the energy renovation plan. The banks are on board also with the advertisements who offer soft loans uh, to, to the uh, citizens of Frederickshaven only. And then what I also mentioned is the partnership that was uh, developed by Brussels Capital Region with the financial cooperative Credal. Uh, and the cooperative housing company, the Housing Fund. So they offer the Brussels Green <coughs> Law to citizens, a uh, very low interest rate for different types of uh, households, depending on the income. And the technical assistance is actually uh, secured by the home grade, which was initially the energy house. And uh, 850 soft loans were already uh, disbursed in eight years mm -hmm. for more than 8 million investments which is not maybe that much, but what is interesting is that there is only one uh, case of default, of payment default of the homeowners who took a loan and didn't pay back. And even this one case was apparently because of the person like uh, became uh, really sick, so it was really the, the, the health reasons. So it's also one, maybe one of the arguments to put on the table that renovations um, are not uh, such a risky business and there are cases where, um, yeah. Uh, that such tools can, can work without without a major risk. Um, and uh, maybe I would just invite you to have a look at uh, our project website where we will regularly publish uh, updated information about our partners, how they progress. Um, and we have uh, recently published the market gap analysis of each of the project partners and as well uh, an inventory of best practices that was developed by Vesta Consign Finance in cooperation with the partners. So that is really looking at different aspects of these one-stop shops uh, and gives recommendations to public authorities of uh, what they have to take care about, uh, what they have to be careful about, and also the best practice uh, case studies for each aspect, each service that was presented here. Um, yeah, so I think that would be it from my side, if you have any questions or questions for our partners, because Francoise from Vesta is here and also Javier from Agenex. So if you have any questions for the project partners directly, do not hesitate to, to ask, knowing that we are still in the beginning of the project. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, thank you. And my name is Christina Klimovich with Europace Project, and thanks, Yana, for the presentation. And I completely echo what you mentioned about the need for a one-stop shop where it's actually going to be easy for homeowners to um, become more energy efficient, where you're providing one holistic solution, and then you're able to create a pipeline and finally reach scale. But my question is more about kind of specifically um, the slide that you had with two types of um, the two roles that a municipality can play. One is a developer and another one is a coordinator. So in terms of the developer side, um, many municipalities certainly lack resources. Um, how, what are some of the um, options that you looked into how to fund this type of program? For instance, in my experience, sometimes municipalities fund it with percentages on financing, in other cases with application fees. So just some of the examples, perhaps, if you could provide, that would be interesting. Uh, I think that the examples when the municipalities or regions were developers of uh, such, a, such a service were mainly in France, so I would ask like, like Francoise, if you would like to maybe respond to this, what is the business model and is it, uh, how was it made sustainable? Or is it sustainable already or not yet? Hello. Um, <coughs> sorry, I was not prepared to, <laughs> to talk. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I would like to mention that uh, we have two, uh, two uh, representatives of uh, such uh, <laughs> uh, first um, uh, examples in France, uh, so uh, Alice and uh, Raphael. Um, so it's true that uh, what is difficult is to reach the, st the, 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 the step where you, 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 you can uh, have, uh, let's say, uh, a few thousand of uh, projects a year. And it's true that uh, this uh, first uh, phase has to be uh, covered by uh, some capital and in addition, I must say that uh, the European uh, 
uh, uh, Europe uh, through uh, EIB or directly have been uh, subsidi have uh, subsidized uh, this uh, uh, first uh, two to three years uh, quite uh, generously. And afterwards, uh, once you assume that you reach this uh, minimum uh, level of activity, um, the, the idea is that uh, indeed you have about two to, well, 1.5 to two or even more Euro, uh, thousand euros to be spent on uh, advisory and uh, letting people know and you have in addition to be quite patient because, because it, can, it can take time, even years. And so uh, basically the idea was uh, to, uh, to finance this through a fee and in addition, in France at least, half of it plus the, the I mean, the, the global cost uh, ha could be also covered by uh, what we call a Certificat d'Economie d'Energy. So it's a white certificate, basically, uh, for a half. Okay, so it, it, for instance, in Picardy, the, the service is available for, let's say, 1.5 uh, thousand uh, euros. And so the idea is that this amount of money should not be paid in advance or at least uh, maybe a small fraction of it, yes, but the, the remaining uh, fee is incorporated in the financing, which, which is really key because it, it makes also the people consider that this uh, service uh, regarding uh, advisory is incorporated in the project and basically part of uh, the refurbishment itself. And so it's a way also to, uh, to, to, to push people towards the realization of their project. Okay, and so, and so this is the advisory part, how it's uh, financed. And the financing itself in France, uh, it, it was made possible through EIB, who uh, has been uh, proposing long-term uh, financing lines. And so this financing, it's possible to uh, to get, to, to, well, so the line is available for, for three to four years, but you are able to, um, uh, to disperse it uh, many times a year, at least two to three times a year, and so you don't have too much um, uh, interest uh, to be paid without <laughs> uh, being used, and it allows you to, uh, to, 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 to follow your, your real activity. And uh, okay, so, and it's fixed rate, um, it's quite low, and so basically it, it makes uh, the, the first uh, uh, operators in France, uh, in a, it makes them, um, well, it allows them to, to extend loans which are really aligned with market conditions, even maybe better, because the key point is that in order to, uh, to make people, uh, well, to, to make the, the project affordable to people, you have to propose them a long-term uh, credit. And so uh, basically in uh, Picardy, for instance, people uh, can have a 24, 25-year uh, repayment period for the insulation, for instance. How many? 25? 25. Thank you. Good afternoon. Many thanks for the presentation. My name is Sebastian Canero and I spent uh, quite a number of years of my professional career in energy efficiency finance. Um, hence my questions related to uh, financing um, uh, measures for home retrofits. I would be very much interested in uh, that financing scheme just mentioned by the, by the EIB. Are they really taking on the credit risk of the homeowners or are they lent against that uh, public entity? No, it's um, the the operator is uh, is taking the risk in front of the homeowners, and uh, EIB is uh, taking the risk on the operator and on the 
the local authority, uh, which is the main uh, uh, stakeholder. And I must say that uh, this is made possible under the Juncker plan also, so uh, basically. And uh, right now we have no idea uh, yet uh, about uh, actual risk, but uh, well, at least in Picardy, uh, the business has been, well, the, the financing business has been launched more than a year ago now, a little more, and there is no default yet. Not yet. <laughs> okay, so we have no statistics yet. Huh? And, and, yes, and so we can say it's either no statistics or zero default. <laughs> <laughs> Because especially in France, it's very difficult to obtain credit data from home owners, right? So um, this is why I'm interested how that works, because uh, it's essentially public finance. Huh? It's not a finance of the homeowner, it's, it's public finance. A public entity is guaranteeing. So um, um, it's, it's still a way to go to, for, for, for financial institutions to directly uh, finance home retrofits. gather data and to make it available and including to banks and uh, uh, and we see uh, that some market actors uh, in the social business are, would be ready to take risk on it uh, as they would be for instance ready we, we are looking at it at, at the moment they would be ready to extend um, a, a first demand guarantee and uh, so it, it would be a way to mitigate risk and to, uh, to, uh, to, to make it shared by various uh, actors. If I may add to this as well, what we learned from the previous project is that the local authorities should really mobilize themselves to create this pipeline of projects and make sure that they are technically viable and that they will achieve the results to be able to mobilize the financing institutions. So really this is uh, important. Good afternoon, Laura Van Huet. I'm a, a consultant working on a financing a scheme around the energy transition. I have a question concerning the, the one uh, uh, stop shop you have uh, presented because most of them work on energy efficiency uh, 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 business uh, model. Um, do some of them integrate also the uh, renewable? Uh, uh, issue because uh, as as uh, self uh, uh, consumption because it would make sense in a certain sense uh, to integrate uh, energy efficiency and renewables yeah, in, in some one project mm -hmm. in some of the projects that uh, of our project partners the renewables are also el eligible measure yeah so they look at the house in a global global manner how to achieve deep energy retrofits. So if renewables are part of that, they also. Do you, uh, do you have some uh, some uh, maybe feedback on the on the uh, demand exactly? Because it could be that uh, some people comes to you or to this uh, uh, shop to uh, 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 not for energy efficiency but for uh, uh, for renewable only. In that case, what 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 happens? Uh, well, I think that for most of the cities, like for example Frederikshaven, when they have an energy advisor who will prepare the energy renovation plan, they will try to convince them to take really uh, the, this global integrated approach to the renovation. So they would tell them maybe first you should take care of your roof and then maybe you should think about how you put the PV panel on that. So they try them always to encourage to, to go for the global solution. But then if somebody wants to only install the renewable energy sources, I think that uh, they, are, they are not going to, to discourage them, but they will inform them that, uh, yeah. Like for example, what was interesting in the city of Herlen, uh, they said that they first actually act on renewables uh, and there were, there were like soft loans and, and I think local subsidies as well to um, buy PV panels because they make the energy visible to people. 
through renewables. And only then, when they are already aware, they will start to tell them about energy efficiency, which is uh, the logic is completely upside down for maybe uh, energy experts, but it's the way they manage to, to raise awareness. Yeah. Okay, I think we, we have time for the last question. So, okay, maybe I have one question. Um, so, what are the different skills needed in the team that run those kind of initiatives to, to really engage the homeowners and to propose them all the set of services that you showed us? Yes, yeah, so I think, and what is also experienced in France showing, that it's the technical experts who are able to, to build the technical part of the projects, the people, the financial experts, the communication and marketing experts, uh, so, and, and then also the people who are able to raise the political support within the municipality, if it's a public or public-private operator. So it's really the combination of different skills. And if it's a coordination model, of course, you are using the, the expertise of all the people who are involved, architects and so on. So it's really uh, a combination, yeah. And um, maybe if I may do some promotion for also for the project that is finished, so we can also present maybe more results. It's the Infinite Solutions, which is we have prepared the guidebook about how the cities developed the soft loans and third-party investment scheme for housing, which you can find in the at the stand in the room next door. And here is just a short overview of three financing schemes. On top of the housing, there is also, also the innovative financing scheme of a revolving fund and interacting that is acting on public buildings and public lighting that was experienced in the city of Stuttgart and then replicated in four other cities in Europe. So this is uh, the three schemes in, in, a, in a glance. And yeah, next, yeah, just keep an eye on Innovate and we'll have further results very soon. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, uh, Jana. Just two final words. Uh, so on this uh, very interesting uh, uh, issue, um, we're organizing a um, webinar on the home renovation, and it, it will be on the 27th of February. Uh, and you can find all the information on the Sustainable Energy Investment Forum's website. And if you want um, more details and documentation about the Horizon 2020 energy efficiency call, which are open, and the deadline is 4th of September. On the table at the entrance of the room, you should find um, all the documentation you need. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, um, please remind that the next session starts in 15 minutes.